Hello there. This video is related to my glass blowing lathe project, but the idea is pretty much universal. So what we want to do is make servo motor out of almost any brushless DC motor. I am going to use Arduino as a microcontroller. I am going to use this motor at pretty low speed, so I am going to use hole sensors. Here you can see that the hole sensor is glued to the face coil. Utilizing back EMF seems pretty much possible even with Arduino. Maybe even at low speeds. But you will need to use some starting algorithm. Hole sensors are connected directly to the Arduino because it has pull-up capability, so that's pretty easy. These six wires are connected to the coil drivers. I am using MOSFETs for preamplification, so the output will be inverted. This is preamplification and bootstrapping of the driver. And this is the driver itself. I don't think that it will make very much heat, so I did it this way. Hmm, can I call this method nothing board? I will replace this soon, but don't expect anything fancy. I mean, breadboards are fiddly and not very reliable. And it's too early for PCB. Anyway, so there's nothing more basically than MOSFETs and diodes for the protection. I am using 1N4008. It's nothing special, but as they say, any diode is better than MOSFET internal diode. Okay, so let's do first test. I'm going to test the performance of this motor with PWM and then we will switch to the full power. For some reason this motor likes very low frequency PWM and that's unusable. I was using piece of nickel wire as a high power resistor. That was that thing that glowed bright red. I really like that it was so quiet without PWM. So I decided to add a back converter. This is also controlled by Arduino. I just had to increase the frequency of PWM output. So now I'm measuring the power output of the back converter and basically I am eyeballing efficiency. And what do you know, it seems pretty efficient for me. And here's the back converter connected directly to the one coil, no it's two coils. This is also very tiny power supply, so you cannot expect very high output. The only one that's more powerful is my PC power supply, and I, <laughs> I don't really want to destroy it right now. The really nice thing about having universal microcontroller connected to your motor is that you can pull out quite interesting data. This for instance is phase coil connected directly to the ADC input. It's not very similar to that when the motor is running, but we are basically measuring the amplitude of the motor back EMF versus the speed. And also the polarity is wrong. And this is the attempt to run the motor with the back converter. That squeaky sound was either sound of dying MOSFET or broken ground connection. At this point I destroyed about 60 MOSFETs. And that was because broken ground connection. And I don't know if it is because the Arduino is clone, but that header is really bad. Whatever. In this clip you can see that the motor is really quiet. In the bottom right corner there's graph that's plotting whole sensor inputs and PWM input. PWM is controlled by the potentiometer, which is controlled by me. <laughs> that's not my real laugh. Also the lower the PWM value the higher the output is. And once again this is because the back converter PWM input is inverted. You can hear the PWM frequency of the back converter a little bit, but this was almost inaudible. Also you can hear the light wind in the crowns of the trees in the background. Just kidding, that's white noise. Ok, moving on. In this clip I am plotting the time which motor spends on each position that can be sensed by a whole sensor. At constant speed this should be straight line. Obviously there are some mechanical resistance of the bearings and whatnot, but it's pretty noisy. The time is actually in milliseconds now, if you can read it at numbers. So let's plot the time that it takes to switch from the one hole sensor to another one. Ok, so three colors are for three phases, and as you can see one phase is quite offset. I think that this is after some adjustments already. To adjust this I can mechanically adjust whole sensor position. It's also possible to add some coefficient. The trick is that if you move one whole sensor the other two will move also a little bit because it's the time between 
one two second one so it's in a circle basically anyway now we are pretty close but the input is still a little bit noisy I mean input it will be the servo control input also you can see that the speed of this motor is not very constant thing is that as I'm looking back at the footage it wasn't this bad always well I guess I should clean these bearings and cover them as soon as possible Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the long awaited. I mean, this is the closest I got to the closed control loop, e.g. servo. So in the graph, once again, there are three colors for three faces and one combined. That's blue, I think, but you cannot see it very well. These are representing time, so if I slow down the motor, it should shoot up. The pink or the violet flame war in 3, 2, 1 represents the PWM input to the back converter. That's basically the power of the motor. Even if the speed is not very consistent, in average it can be said that it kinda is. Also, if I plot the average speed only, the line is pretty much straight. If I add load to the motor, the PWM line goes right down and the speed value tries to stay constant. Unless, of course, I overload the motor. Also, when I release the load, the motor will spin up rapidly. This can be more or less solved by software, but it all boils down to sample rate. I have 3 hole sensors and 12 magnets. I am sensing only one polarity, so that's 36 positions per revolution. That's not very fine, basically. For my application, this may be sufficient, because I'm not as much concerned about the speed of the motor. What I need to do is to maintain the angular position of two motors relative to each other. Hey, you're still here, that's good. I wanted to show you something. I was thinking about using this thing as a beam interrupter for the encoder, basically. Optical sensor, the thing that you have maybe in mouse for the middle, that wheel thing. And it's quite high resolution, this is about 600 impulses. And right now, a bit more because that's not very good picture this is I think 600 impulses and focus you fuck yeah, it's the same as this but this has filled these these things fingers yeah or maybe this one I mean, this has inner diameter as my spindle on the lathe, so this is 14 millimeters, this is 80, and that's the idea. Yes, and I mean, print this to the transparent sheet basically as if you are going to make PCBs or ask some company, they are doing this very high quality very high quality films that are using professionally to make PCBs so it's pretty high transparency foil and blackest black you can find oh well that's not true but <laughs> you get the idea and the second thing I wanted to show you is this drawing of my cats this is by my sister and that's not the main point you know these things these are magnetic stickers basically you put this on your fridge and you're good. And this work by the principle that there are very tiny strips of magnetic poles basically. So here I have hole sensor and I must flip this so you can see that. Well, you can turn this basically around sound shaft and glue it there and if you have a very big, very big diameter shaft, you have encoder, basically. Or maybe linear encoder. That's pretty nice idea.